So we're going to talk today about setting up your book jacket dust cover. The very first thing we need to do is to set up a uh, document size for ourselves, create a new one. We're going to hit the create new button. If you're on an older version of Photoshop, um, it's going to be, it may look a little bit different, but it's the same process. You just go to file new at the top and we're going to customize our set up here and you want it to be about and make sure it's set to inches around 18 by 9 so it's going to give us a widescreen look make sure it's set to the landscape um, so you can obviously select that change the size depending on the book that you have um, some books are very thin some books are thick so if you have Moby Dick it's going to be a thicker book be a little bit uh, wider when you set your document up but if you have let's say a book like slaughterhouse five it's going to be thinner so you can get away with maybe having uh, instead of 18 across 16 or something like that um, so that's a, a sliding scale there that you can choose with your inches but most people go in the range of 18 by 9 and then we need to set the document up to 300 pixels per inch. Make sure it's a real high resolution. It may default to 72 or something like that. 300 is what we need. We're going to click create. We have a new document size that we're working with here. Now this is going to be the book jacket dust cover. To uh, make sure that you understand what that means, I'm going to show you a couple examples of previous student work from my classes that have uh, done this project before. Let's go to File, New. These are two of the more successful ones. So when I'm talking about a book jacket dust cover, I'm talking about like if you go to the bookstore, you order a book, and uh, it's a hardcover edition, and it has the dust jacket that wraps around the corner. I mean, the corners of the book. So you'll have, if you take that dust jacket off, you'll see that there's flaps to the left and the right. Uh, of course we have the front and the back cover and the central spine that's going to be what the first thing you see when the book is on the shelf. Um, so this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the book jacket dust cover. If we were just doing a paperback, maybe we wouldn't do those sides, but I like to include the full layout and this would be wrapped around the book. Um, so normally the book jacket dust cover is going to include things like uh, what are called praise quotes. Um, if you go to Amazon or a publisher's website or just look at the actual book you're going to find quotes that the publishers included to praise the book to show it off. Um, if it's an older book like like I mentioned Moby Dick you may see things like um, an all-time American classic novel, um, the greatest American novel ever written, things like that. You can also include the author's bio. So we have Philip K. Dick here. We've got the author's photo and a very short bio, short being the, uh, the operative word there. And then also a short synopsis of what the book is. And I don't give you specific examples of where those things need to go or even the information that you need to include because I don't want to limit you, but these are the sorts of things we would include on the book. So look up a short synopsis of the book, look up the author's bio, author photo. You can include um, publishing information. A lot of students, as you see, include the barcode. So there's a lot of different directions that you can go. Um, Here's another example, Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. Um, and it's a very similar um, thing that this student has gone with, with praise quotes, uh, brief summaries, um, and publisher information. And you can have a lot of fun with that. So for this project, you're going to have to come up with all the materials yourself. And what I mean by that is... Um, no pulling anything off the internet except for the author's photo. That's the one thing you are allowed to use. Um, but the uh, all the other material, like the photograph that the students used here, um, the 
what looks sort of like blood splattered background. That's a Photoshop brush that they used. Um, any animation, any drawing, any scans, um, that needs to be completely uh, unique. Of course, you can also use the barcode. You can uh, pull that off the internet if you need to. Everything else needs to be original designs to yourself. So if we go back to Philip K. Dick here, we can see that the uh, student did a hand done drawing and a notepad. They scanned that in, or you can also take a photograph of it and bring it in that way. They looks like they pulled the con brightness and contrast up, but uh, you know, used the hand drawing really effectively there and actually reused the drawing down here in the corner. The background was um, just like the Blood Meridian is a Photoshop brushes to add texture. I've had students that scanned in a newsprint before to get a nice texture. I think that um, I always recommend not using flat color. I think that's something that can separate your project from you know other examples that may seem a little bit less finished. But if you're able to look for Photoshop brushes, there's a lot of freebies on the internet that you can pull from. And um, paint splatters, uh, grunge texture, all that sort of thing adds a depth to the book, makes it feel sort of uh, lived in and well-worn. It's got a nice warm quality to it. Um, and then again with the Blood Meridian you can see the student did a similar thing. Um, the more textures you can bring in to your book cover, I think that it will uh, sort of work for you as you're working towards a finished product. Another option would be, if we go back to our book cover here, another option would be to um, add in a gradient. I've had a lot of students do that really effectively. So I'll just really quickly talk about the gradient tool. It's about in the middle here of my Photoshop tools. If I select that tool, if you see where I'm kind of hovering my mouse around, you can see that um, this window pops up in my menu bar and I can set the foreground and background colors. So let's go with uh, something kind of blue. Let's fade from a blue color. I'm going to double click down here in the left hand corner. Let's go blue to purple maybe. See how that looks. Darker color. I click OK. So I've got a blue to purple. And um, now up here in the menu bar, I've got these different options, which is like radial, gradient, angle gradient, but the one we want to do is the very first one, which is linear gradient. If you click that one, oh, I also should say you can do a drop down where you can go from um, foreground to transparent. Uh, it gives you a black and white option. This is under the basics drop down. But the one that we want to do is foreground to background. And um, now when you hover your mouse over the uh, screen, you should see this little bullseye that pops up. What you want to do is to click, hold down, and drag the mouse across the screen. And that you will see, when you lift up on the mouse, you will see the gradient in place. Sort of a nice, uh, subtle uh, fade from blue to purple. If you click and hold down and drag over a smaller section, you'll see that gradient is a lot more abrupt. Um, I think most of them that work effectively tend to be a longer gradient, so you want to click drag. You can actually even go off the screen and it'll show you a nice um, fade between those colors. That's a nice place to start with. That's just one option for you if you don't want to go with the more papery, grungy, brushy texture. Um, it's just a, a way to avoid having a solid color um, which can look flat and lack depth. Um, if you do end up wanting to go the route with working with a solid color though, you can simply go to edit, fill, and then select the foreground color if you want to go with straight blue. So that is an option for you. Okay, 
So the next thing and the last thing I want to talk about in this short lecture is to add in your guides and that's going to be the start of your book jacket design. It's very, very important that your book is um, completely symmetrical. What I mean by that is um, it's the same on the left and the right. So if we printed this out, actually wrapped it around the book cover, there would be no uh, inconsistency and it wouldn't be lopsided or no, no parts would be cut off. Okay, so the first thing that I like to do, first of all, I should say that you need to have your rulers on the top and the uh, left hand side of the screen. If you do not see those rulers on your screen, go up to um, view and then scroll down to rulers. Apple key R is the shortcut for that. So if it looks like this, you want to go to view, select rulers, and on the left and the, the top, you should see those rulers in place now. Okay, so this is very easy and effective. Um, all you need to do now, take your mouse, drag it over the ruler. As you can see my mouse rolling around, uh, rolling around the screen there. You want to click, hold down, and drag. So I'm continuing to hold down on the mouse. And I'm dragging it over to the midpoint. So if my uh, book jacket is 18 inches across, I'm landing directly on 9. That's just giving me a center point. And from that center point, now you can decide how thick you want the spine of your book cover to be. As I said, I would actually look into and investigate the actual book that you're designing or redesigning because um, a book like Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, like that, that I showed you, it's going to have a thin book spine versus the Bible or Moby Dick. Obviously, a thicker book is going to have a broader spine. So what you can do is start that midpoint, a very thick book cover, you could go out a half an inch to each side. That would be something like the Bible. Um, if it's something thinner, you can go start with the midpoint and go out maybe half an inch. I said half an inch earlier, I'm in an inch. So now we're at half an inch and the, the total length of the book spine is now one inch from eight and a half to nine and a half across. Okay, then you can eliminate the middle line if you need to. You just click on it, hold it down yet again, drag it off the screen, and it'll disappear. Just to be really clear that these, uh, these lines that are on the screen will not print or save to the JPEG when you save your final project. So you don't need to worry about those uh, blue lines being there permanently. They're just within the Photoshop document. It's not a big deal. Okay. So we've got our spine set. Um, now we're going to add the flaps on the dust jacket. And yet again, you can decide, depending on the book that you have, how thick you want that to be. So if I pull out my another guideline, if I'm going to pull that across to three, now I have a very uh, thin book jacket cover, but my flaps are a little bit thick, okay? So that doesn't entirely look realistic to me, so I may consider um, tweaking that a little bit, maybe going to uh, two inches on the book jacket, or actually let's say two and a half. Now that's something that looks a little bit more natural the main thing that I would focus on is the front cover and the back cover. Don't obsess or focus too much on the dust flaps, okay? So let's say that you get to your design portion and you decide that you really like the layout, but the flaps look a little bit too thin, but you don't want to alter the spine or the front and the back, okay? There is a really easy way to change your proportions in Photoshop. You just want to go back up to File, you want to go to New. I'm sorry, no, that's not what we want to do. We want to go to File. Um, no, I'm sorry. We want to go to Image. And we want to go to Canvas Size. I was still thinking about adding, making a new project and not altering the one we have. So we want to go to Image. Let me do that one more time. 
We want to go to image, canvas size. This window will pop up. And here are the original dimensions that we set in. You can see it's 18 across and 9 top to bottom. All you need to really do is change that. Let's say change that to 20. Not going to alter the height. We're going to click OK. And it's added some space to the left and the right. Now it did change. We did lose that gradient, right? So it added in that purple background color. So we need to, uh, you would need to redo your uh, gradient. But in most cases, that's not a big deal. Uh, but this is another reason why we want to get all this stuff settled before we actually add text in and start doing the fun part of our project. So that's the beginning. That's the setup for your book jacket cover. You should be ready to start adding those elements in. You want to put in your text, uh, your images, your scanned drawings. For this project, you are open to bringing in absolutely anything that you want as long as it's not um, something that's pulled from the internet. Okay? Thank you so much for listening and have fun with your project.